four cores versus six cores 10 years later. Yes, you heard me right. Intel's first generation of core series CPUs, the i7-920 versus the i7-980X, four versus six cores 10 years ago. This is being tested on the X58 motherboard. Both CPUs are at the same clock speed, 4.5 gigahertz. And some of you may not realize that was a thing in 2010. It was expensive. The i7-980X was a $1,000 Extreme Edition CPU. Well, they technically had one slightly above that, but the i7-980X is really all you needed because it was unlocked and overclockable via the multiplier setting as opposed to the i7-920, which was overclockable using base clock adjustments, but that was never 100% perfect and it limited you to only certain speeds. You couldn't just change it to whatever you wanted. With an unlocked multiplier chip, such as the X CPU, you could just dial in a multiplier and away you go. So we're looking at four cores versus six cores 10 years ago when frankly, nobody was really asking the question, do you need six cores for gaming? And the truth of the matter is, in 2010, yeah, didn't. There, there really wasn't any need for a consumer at that point to have six cores, and that might have been jumping the gun a little bit. We are testing live gameplay, and of course, live gameplay is never perfectly matched, and obviously different things are going on and different things are happening, so this is meant to give you a general guideline of performance as opposed to being a strict straight up benchmark. I can run the built-in benchmark, but the built-in benchmark is a better graphics card test than it is a CPU test. Because in the real world with real enemies, you're actually using your CPU, you're on the live server, you're interacting with their systems. The built-in benchmark is just drawing graphics on the screen. It isn't really testing it. For these kinds of open world games that are live on the server, this isn't something you can play offline. You have to have an internet connection to play this game. You have to be online with the servers. If it can't connect to the server, you cannot play the game. Welcome to the wonderful world of not really owning your games anymore. You just own a license until they decide to shut them down. But that's neither here nor there. That's a big change from 10 years ago. I guess there were some games 10 years ago, Star Wars Galaxies looking at you, and a variety of early MMOs. But for the most part, games like this would have been something that you can still play today. Okay, we're getting off track. Coming back to the performance on these things, you'll see that the i7-920 is definitely using more CPU power than the i7-980X. Do remember that 100% usage on, on both of them is not the same amount of uh, performance because these are four core eight thread and six core 12 thread chips. 100% usage on the i7-920, which you see there, where the 96, 94, 99%, 100%. That CPU is completely 100% slammed, and that is massively overclocked. The i7-920, stock out of the box, runs at 2.66 gigahertz. This is nearly a 2 gigahertz overclock. It is a monster overclock. For those of you curious, take a look at those temperatures. 60 degrees Celsius. Boy, it sure makes Intel's current chips look bad, don't it? Here's the funny thing. This is running on a 120 millimeter liquid cooler. Yes, you heard me correctly. It's not an Octua NHD 15. It's not a 360 millimeter. It's not some fancy custom cooling. This is a $50 120 millimeter liquid cooler. It is not fancy and it does the job just fine. I actually videoed uh, the upgrade of this system and that'll show up at some future point. But the fact that a 10 year old six core 12 thread CPU running at 4.5 gigahertz at about 80% usage is at 65C? Well, one of two things is happening. Either the temperature reporting is not working right, which I guess is always possible because I don't have a like an external thermocouple or a FLIR or imaging camera or anything. This is I'm going off the reporting on the on the motherboard, obviously, and it's not new. Uh, for those of you curious, this is an ASUS P16 motherboard. It's not a top of the line board, but it's not an entry level board either. There was a mid range board uh, when I first got it for the i7 920 way back when. But yeah, what happened to CPUs? Look at this uh, temperature and the clock speed 10 years ago and today. Well, I guess we have eight cores, 12 threads at five gigahertz. But man, even with a $100 cooler, you're still pushing 90 plus C if you're using, well, this much of the CPU. 
One question some people are going to have is, what about the graphics card? Why are you using an RTX 2080 Ti? This is a 10-year-old, C actually it's a 12-year-old CPU for the i7-920, but well, we're calling it 10 years because that's when the 980X came out with the refresh. And the simple answer is to make it a CPU test. This is 1440p high detail, and the only reason it's 1440p is because frankly 1080p would be utterly absurd. And you'll notice that we're not stressing the graphics card. The graphics card, unless I missed it, never hit 100% anywhere in these benchmarks. If it did, it tapped it for just a second. But you can see we're in the 60 to 70-ish percent range on the GPU. So we are truly, totally 100% CPU bound. Even on the 6-core 12-thread i7-980X, we're still 100% CPU bound. And the simple fact is even at 4.5 gigahertz, this is still a first gen CPU. A lot of people like to say, well, there haven't really been a lot of CPU performance enhancements in the past few years. It's all kind of the same. Intel's just doing 5% improvements. Well, those 5% improvements add up over time. Now, to be sure, they have not 10 x their performance in the past 10 years, but they've definitely doubled their performance. If we were using a modern CPU like the i7-8700K, six core, 12 thread coffee lake, then yeah, the graphics card would be at 100% and we'd have more performance and frankly, it'd be nicer across the board. And that CPU runs at 4.3 stock, all core boost, 4.7 with MCE on, or frankly, five gigahertz. If you just turn it on, it's not too bad. So modern CPUs definitely are faster, but if you'd spent the $1,000 on a 980X way back when, you got a lot of use out of it for a very long time. And assuming you're not running an RTX 2080 Ti, it's still quite useful today. There are a few circumstances where it would no longer be useful. If you wanted to live stream this game, if you want to live stream all the new games, it would be pretty rough. We're starting back here at the beginning of the benchmark, and I'm gonna slow this way down so you can see the numbers without them changing so rapidly. This is running at 5% speed, so you'll still see some motion and stuff going on, but it gives you a chance to look at the numbers change slowly without having to pause and restart and pause and restart the video. Take a look at the i7-920. Please remember, this is a two, almost two gigahertz overclock. 4.5 gigahertz instead of 2.6. That is monstrous. That's when overclocking meant something. Today, you overclock, you get 300 megahertz, and you go, woohoo, come on. This was when overclocking meant something. The graphics card is almost bored. And the only reason it's not 100% bored is we're at 1440p instead of 1080p, and the graphics card is at 64%. The CPU is pegged at 100% and has nowhere else to go. Every core, every thread, every single bit of that CPU is basically going, ouch, please can I go home now, this hurts. On the i7-980X, we're at about 75% usage. So it's using most of the cores and threads, but not all of them. You do, in fact, have a little bit in reserve. Now, granted, we're not in exactly the same spot doing exactly the same thing, but it's roughly similar. It's We're doing the same sort of thing, playing in daylight on the street in an in open environment. So it's, it's similar in that regard. Take a look at the real-time performance number. What performance you get will depend dramatically. Now, I played this for like 20 minutes, and I'm not going to show you all of that. But how much you do throughout the run is obviously going to affect the performance at any given moment. But take a look at the real-time performance right now. 71 to 107. That's fairly large in terms of performance difference. It won't always be that much, and there'll be times when they get closer, especially uh, I did go indoors later. I probably spent too much time indoors, which kicked both numbers up, which kind of moved the averages around a little bit. That probably helped the uh, four-core chip more than the six-core chip did. In the indoor section, the frame rate was closer. So I'm showing this to you again in slow-mo, so you can realize that, yes, if you look at averages, if you look at that, I'll show you the chart in just a minute. You may very well say, what's the big deal? Clearly, there's no benefit to six cores. Oh, man, these old things run the game great. There's no problem. Well, there is and there isn't. From a good enough point of view, is a four-core, eight-thread i7-920 from 12 years ago, because it launched at the end of 2000, well, really 11 years ago, it launched at the end of 2008, 
At 4.5 gigahertz, which again is a monster overclock, is it good enough to play the Division 2 in 2020? Yes, it is. You don't need a 2080 Ti, of course. If you want to play at 1440p, a RTX 2070 Super or a RX 5700 XT would be absolutely lovely and would probably be right at about 100% usage in this scenario. Eh, it might be a little bit lower on the frame rates, but you certainly don't need a 2080 Ti. And, and of course, if you can afford a 2080 Ti, you shouldn't be using these CPUs anyway. That's kind of a beside the point. But the reason I'm running this at 5% is I just want to sort of hammer home the point that these are completely clean test machines. It's a fresh install of Windows. Nothing's running in the task tray. Everything is as pure as pure gets. This copy of Windows has not been updated from four different previous versions. It hasn't had seven versions of the NVIDIA driver on it. I haven't changed video cards from anything else. There's nothing on it. It, it is as pristine as pristine gets. And we are using 100% of that poor i7-920. The i7-980X is also being fully utilized, but this game does not use 12 threads, at least not in this. We could go into the dark zone in PvP and use a bit more. And there's a bit left in reserve on the 980X for stuff running in the background, a web browser running, uh, browsing the web, watching a YouTube video like this one, uh, watching a Twitch stream, uh, various programs syncing and updating Dropbox and G Drive and OneDrive and whatever else you have running, because none of that stuff's running on this on this test bench. So if you spend a thousand dollars, yes, uh, it does a pretty good job. And as you can see from the performance right here, that's fairly large, but it doesn't hold in the indoor section. It doesn't hold everywhere. And the law of averages do tend to kick each other out. I mean, obviously I would have to go to the these two different spots on the map and do a direct side-by-side -side comparison, which, you know, that's actually kind of challenging to do and takes a lot of time. I did test more than one game on this configuration. You will see more in the future. And I won't talk this much on the follow-up videos. My expectation is you'll come back and watch this first before you go watch. I'm going to try to make the follow-up videos five minutes. We'll see. I'm not very good at doing five minutes, but we'll see if I can do that. But for those of you curious, let's jump ahead and take a look at another scene at this speed. Now, this is actually at the same point of gameplay. I didn't like shuffle around the footage at all. In fact, if you go to the full speed section, you'll see this was actually at the same time. So I didn't, I didn't do any cheating or dragging around. This is the same period into the benchmark. Notice that the real-time performance is a whole lot closer here, and the usage on the 980X is a whole lot higher. It's not 100%, but at 83%, we are deep, deep, deep into the hyper-threading. This is, it's not 100%, but boy, oh boy, are all six cores being used, and then some. How much is obviously going to vary depending on how the Windows moves the threads around, but let's just say that it's using way more than six threads. Notice the real-time performance is below the current running average. In fact, right now, as I speak, they're exactly the same. So you could say, oh, well, look, they're exactly the same. What's the problem? Well, okay, come on. Look at the current running average, 84 to 117. That's not going to hold, by the way, but that's where it is at this point in the battle. If I had to sum the entire thing up, while these CPUs were amazing in their day, if you want to play current modern games, AAA games, such as the Division 2, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, Cyberpunk uh, 2077, Watchdog Legion, seriously, you are so due for an upgrade, it's not even funny. Somebody actually asked me the other day, they said, well, I've got an i7-920, what would you recommend I upgrade to? A new computer, is what I said. And they're like, well, can't I? No, you need a, you need everything. Everything needs to be replaced. I mean, if, you've, if your video card's recent, you can keep it for sure, but I mean, you need a new motherboard, CPU, you need new RAM, I'm you probably need new storage. You need a new computer. Keep your current computer as a backup or a spare and just build yourself a new computer. Because if your whole computer, your case, your power supply, uh, motherboard, RAM, certainly video card, that would be horribly obsolete at this point. If that all dates from 2008 to 2010, you are way due for an upgrade if you want to play current modern games. Well, I've certainly talked way too much. So how about we put this back at full speed? I'll let you just watch about, oh, another 10 seconds of this or so, and then we're going to jump to a benchmark chart. Drum roll, please. Anybody want to take a guess what the performance numbers were when all was said and done? Average frame rates, 97 on the 920 versus 107 on the 980X. If all you do is look at this chart, frankly, 
you don't know much more than you did before you looked at it. It's nice, and you go, well, we'll see, it's fine. There's no problem. Apparently, everything's great. Really? Is it? Well, yeah, maybe, kind of. But see, this is why I show you the footage of the gameplay. Because that pegging of 100% and the performance drop-off when it did peg at 100% is real. And that's going to happen at the most important times. A lot of this game is running around and exploring and going from spot to spot. It's the heavy combat sections that it drops down, but it doesn't drop down percentage-wise all that often. The 1% low is fine. 59 to 64, those are pretty close, all things considered. Although the 1% low on the 920 was uplifted from the non-combat sections... But yeah, it, there really is a real performance difference when it counts. As a further point, this is also at almost 2 gigahertz overclocked. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will be saying, Quick, Tech, show us a comparison between an i7-920 at 2.6 versus an i7-920 at 4.5. No, I'm not going to do that. The performance is terrible. How bad is it? It's terrible. If you don't have any ability to upgrade and you have to deal with it, well... Maybe the Division 2 is not in your agenda. I mean, yeah, it functions, it works, it displays frames. A 2.6 gigahertz i7-920 really in 2020 is pretty bad. So no, I'm not going to test it because I don't want to sit through it and suffer through it. So it's just take my word for it or don't. It's just awful. Either overclock the heck out of it or upgrade to something. Frankly, you should upgrade to something newer if you have any means whatsoever. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and helpful and useful. You know where the like button is. You know where the subscribe button is. Those are always very helpful. Leave me comments down below. Let me know what you think of this video. A little bit different than my usual coverage on the channel. Uh, I'm not really selling you anything here or telling you to go buy anything specific other than the fact that Ryzen is an amazing value for the money and if you like your money and you want the best deal, then Ryzen is currently it. But beyond that, anything newer is going to be better than these things if you want a faster, smoother, more stable, more enjoyable overall computing experience. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.